All right, it is gap day. We are getting behind on our gap puzzles, and I feel like every time I do one of these videos, I say we're getting behind, and I'm gonna do more of them to get caught up, and then I don't, but, you know, maybe someday we will. But if you're unfamiliar with gaps, these are genuinely approachable pencil puzzles. So the idea is these are, pencil puzzle just means pretty much any type of puzzle that you could just do with paper and pencil. I'm gonna do them online, but you could do them with paper and pencil. Um, and generally, we exclude Sudoku from that, you can do Sudokus with pencil and paper, but just to distinguish from Sudoku, we call everything else pencil puzzles, I guess. And genuinely approachable means that these are supposed to be doable by someone who's never done this puzzle type before. Um, oftentimes, I have never done these puzzle types before. Some of them I have, some of them I haven't. And so these should be entry level, um, not necessarily simple if you've never done this genre before, but you should be able to um, understand the rules and figure out where how to approach it anyways. So, all right, so our first puzzle is a Taj Mahal. This one's by Shy. So the rules, let's see, I'm gonna pull up the example here. I think we're gonna need it. So the rules say, draw straight lines connecting pairs of grid points to form squares. Okay, so, and it says allowing non-orthogonal lines, which just means it doesn't have to be, you know, you can do angled lines. So you'll notice like that three over there, it, it has, it's not even, um, it doesn't even just go diagonally between to connecting point, you know, it's it's diagonal, but it's sort of between points as well. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> um, all squares, squares may only touch at the corners, and all squares must form one connected network. Okay, so they're all touching at corners, and they all have to be connected. Can't have any loner squares. Uh, circles mark the centers of all squares, so the circles are the centers, and a number in a circle represents how many other squares its square shares a corner with. Okay, so we can see that three again touches the, the one in the top left with no number. It touches the two, and it touches this bigger one with no number in the middle. So, okay. I think I understand the rules. I'm not sure I have any idea how to approach solving this, but, um, yeah. Okay. I guess we're gonna, we're just gonna go for it and uh, hope for the best. So, Let's see, link in the description as usual if you want to try this yourself. I'm gonna give it a shot now, see how it goes. Let's reset the timer, okay? So, I mean, this five here has to touch all five of these, right? But I don't know what that tells us. Well, for one thing, a square only has four corners and this five needs to touch five things. So at least one of the corners is gonna to have to touch two of these. What about this one and two over here? There's no way for this one not to touch the two. So it has the two has to be the one that it touches. Now, if we did something like this, they're gonna be both touch sharing an edge. So I think we have to do that. Well, yeah, yeah, we do. You could do something like um uh let's see. You know, something like this, right? but then it's not gonna be the center of that square. So we're gonna to have to do this, and so I think that then forces these to both be small squares because the circle has to be the center. Now this one can't touch anything else, but the two does need to touch one of these other ones. Okay, let's go back to this five. How are we gonna make this work? So, I mean, we can do a square like this, but then there's no way for this one to then connect with that without, you know, you'd, you'd be going too close to that. So that's not gonna work. We could do this type of square. But that's gonna force this one to be a square as well, and now we're gonna, we're not gonna be able to use this one to connect. So that's not gonna work. We could do a bigger diamond, which, which forces this one to be a square, and now there's no way for this one to connect to the five without, you know, touching the side like this. And they have to connect at the corner. So that's not gonna work either. We can't do a bigger, you know, normal square. So it's gotta be some one of these weird angle things. Something like, no, nope, that's not gonna work. Uh, need to figure out how to even make it a square. We can't do that, it's too close to the five. What about this? That looks promising. 
Okay, that's going to force this one to be like that. This one... Yeah, this one can just be a normal square. Which lets this one be a tiny square. This, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna work, I think. Oh, what about this one down here though? Ah, so close. It doesn't work with this one down here, does it? Thought that was gonna work. Okay, so maybe it's like that, but just tipped the other direction. Um, like this. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna work, I think. Maybe, we'll see. Um, this is still a normal square. This thing is a diamond and that works. This can still be just a tiny square. And then this one's gotta connect so... I think we can do that. Yeah, there we go. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, all connected to the five. Uh, two connected to the two, one connected to the one. So now we just gotta connect these last ones. This one's gotta be there. And then, so the two needs to connect to both of these. Uh, but it can't, let's see, can we do, yeah, I think we can do this. And then the one just has to connect to the two. And I think, ooh, do we do something wrong? It didn't pop up and tell me I got it right. All right, so I figured out what was wrong. Um, the way the system works, it doesn't want this to be one line across here. It wants these to be uh, two separate lines, and then it pops up and says, so I had it right, I just didn't draw it in a way that the system understood. So let's see, that was 450. Um, let's check how my time fits with the, okay, so sloth was three minutes, so I got a crab, I'll take a crab. 7.20 was the crab time, so I was well under the crab time, so I'm always happy with the crab on a, t on a puzzle type that I've never done before. So, moving on to the next one. All right, next up is Pipe Link by Jovial. So the rules say, draw a loop through the centers of all cells. Okay, we've done quite a few puzzle types like that before. Two perpendicular line segments may intersect each other, that's unusual, but not turn at their intersection or otherwise overlap. Okay, we're gonna have to look at the example. I'm not sure what that means. A clue shows how the loop crosses through the cell it's in. Okay, so they can overlap, intersect with each other, but not turn at their intersection. Or other. Okay, I understand. So it just has to be a cross. If it's gonna cross, it has to be a cross. It can't be uh, like, um, it can't turn and then come in and turn again. If they intersect, they have to be crossing each other, essentially is what it's saying. Okay, and then there's these clues in the grid, like the on the example puzzle, we have that plus at the top, and then the kind of dash in the middle, and then the vertical one farther down, and those just are, are part of the loop, essentially. It's part of the loop is drawn in for you. Okay, cool. I think I understand this, and I'm gonna give it a try. Link in the description as usual. Um, Let's reset the timer, see how we do. Okay, so, I mean, we know the line goes in here. I mean, we can we can kind of do some of this stuff already. Oh, and we know it goes through every part of the grid. So as usual on these types of puzzles, we can draw in these corners already. Uh, this has to connect there. I mean, some of this is, a lot of this is forced, right? And this has to be a crossing. This is gonna have to turn and come down, which is gonna connect there. Something's gonna have to come over here. Excuse me. Just gonna connect there. So now this one's gonna have to do, th ooh, okay, hold on. Oh, yeah, so it's gotta be a cross like that. There we go. Yep, that works. Uh, the crossing thing makes it interesting. Because like right here, I want to make this turn, but it could, yeah, it probably turns. This is going to cross, go there. So now we've got to have something in there. I'm 
having trouble clicking in the right spot today. These are forced to turn. That does all of that, and this, and this goes across there, which means that's a crossing. And so we need to make sure this is just a single loop somehow. This is getting kind of confusing as far as what what lines connect where. Okay, well this comes all the way around here. So we need to not connect that. So let's do something like this. And so now this is this end. I'm gonna connect those. This needs to not connect there. So let's do that and turn that way. And there maybe, so these two ends and these two ends and then we've got these two ends so if we do something like that does that work so we go all the way around here and around here and to there and so we just need to connect the ends there we go perfect all right so that was pipe link let's see 246 how did i do another crab Good. And well under the 5.30 times, so that's good. All right, that was Pipe Link. Moving on to the next one. All right, this next one is a Kincon Can by Turganis. Now, I've done exactly one Kincon Can in my life, um, and I really don't remember it at all. So it was part of a, a, a big ARG puzzle hunt that I helped make, and the other person who was helping set it, uh, Reverend, um, did this puzzle and I had just solved it just to test solve and I didn't really know what I was doing. So, <laughs> we'll see if I can remember how this works. So there's a lot of rules. The rules, there's a lot of, but it's not as, it's, there's just a lot of explanation. Um, it's not quite as complicated as initially sounds. So we're placing diagonal lines into some cells. So you can see in the example, there's diagonal lines that have been put in. So essentially those diagonal lines are mirrors. If you think of a laser beam coming out of the letters, so like the A1 over here. If you imagine a laser pointing straight across and it hits that mirror in the second row, second column there, and it reflects up and hits the other A1, okay? So the ones with the same letters have to connect to each other and the number is telling you how many times it bounces. So you'll see the B2 in the top left. If a laser beam was coming straight down, it would hit that mirror and it would go to the right two cells and it would hit that other mirror in the first row and bounce down and go to the other B2, if that makes sense. So I think that's pretty much the extent of the rules that we really need. Essentially, the beam comes out of one of the letters, keeps going until it hits a mirror, then it bounces off in a 90 degree angle and it keeps going until it hits another mirror and eventually it needs to get to the same letter. Now, it doesn't matter which letter you start at because the beam is going to end up being the same either way. The number tells us how many times it has to bounce. That should be all the rules. So I'm gonna give it a try now. Um, link in the description as usual, and we'll see how this goes. Reset the timer. There we go, all right, we're off. Okay, um, so the D1, I mean, it has to do that. That's, I mean, that's the only way to only get one bounce. Now the B1 is gonna have to do the same type of thing. The only way to do one bounce and get to the B. So. The E2, um, ooh, one, I think you can use this one for the E as well. I think you can reuse the same mirror for more than one. So I think we can do that for the E. It's either gonna, oh wait, oh, there's one rule that I forgot to mention. Each region must contain exactly one diagonal line. That is key, okay. I will go back and add something a little note um, earlier. Uh, so the E2, so, right, so we, the E is gonna have to hit that because we can't put another, another mirror in here, like somewhere in here, okay. So in fact, we can do this. Once we have a mirror in a region, we can fill in the whole region with dots. So we remember not to do any more, okay. So the C is gonna have to bounce in one of these three. Now, if it was here, Uh, it would be too quick. It would it would hit the. We need to do three. And if it bounces down, it's gonna have to go one, two. 
there's no way for it to get back into this column, so it can't be there. Could be here and then over and up. Except if it goes over here, then it's messing up our B1. So, oh right, because of the B1, we can fill this in. Yeah, 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 we can do that. Uh, we can do the same thing with the D, can't we? We can fill these in, because we can't block that path for that beam. So the C has to be here, it has to come up, and then one of these two is going to be kicking to the right, so we can. F that's going to use the one for that region. So the A has to kick to the right in one of these. Okay, so it's just the C and the A that we're still doing, right? Now the A has to get... Ah, one of them's gonna have to be here. So this is gonna have to go over and down. I think it's gonna do this one, two, and then over and up. And the C is going up and it needs to go over and up. So to do that, one, two, three, and this one, there. There we go, all right, cool. Perfect. So 244, let's see. I suspect that's a little too slow for a sloth. Yep, 140 was the sloth time. Um, if I had remembered the rule about the one thing per region, maybe I would have been closer at least. I don't know if I would have got the sloth, but there you go. That was Kincon Can. That one's kind of fun to picture lasers. We used it um, as part of an ARG where it was like a puzzle hunt and the storyline was that somebody was in like a cave, like an Indiana Jones thing, and it was booby trapped and you were bouncing the lasers off of the mirrors and stuff, so it was kind of exciting. But anyways, moving on to the next one. All right, so our next puzzle is a Tom Tom. This one's by Freddie Hand. So we'll place a number from one to N in each cell so that each row and column contains every number from that range with no repeats. So let's look at the example. So this is um, like a Latin square, similar to Sudoku, but without the, the regions, the boxes like Sudoku has. Um, N is the side length square. A clue represents the value obtained by applying an operation iteratively on the numbers in the region the clue is in. If no operation is given, it may be any of plus minus. So if we look at six plus, okay, so if we add all three of them, one, two, and three, you get six. The one minus, um, and, and so for minus and division, you start with the biggest and then work your way down. So the one minus would mean you take four, minus one, minus one. Oh, right. No, I understand. Okay. Four minus two is two minus one is one. So we're doing that operation and then the number is what we result in. Yeah, okay. And then like the 12x, so we're multiplying. So four times one times three equals 12. Okay. I think I understand that now. And so, um, and then some of them don't have any, that's just the Latin square. You're filling it in with no repeats. Okay. I think I understand the rules. So link in the description. I'm going to give it a try. Let's see how this goes. Reset the timer. All right. So uh, we're doing 1 through 5. This has to be 10 when you multiply, so it's got to be 2 and 5. So these are 2 and 5. We don't know the order yet. These are also 2 and 5. So that's our 2, 5. So these have to be 1, 3, and 4. Uh, 10 plus. So three numbers of sum to 10. So we could do like 5, 1, 4, 5, 2, 3. Um, you have to have a 5, though. You have to have a 5. So the 5 is in there. This is two, this is five, two, five. Okay, this is not five. So five, and then you're gonna have one, four, two, three. We can't do two, three, so this has to be one, four, five. Um, come on, there we go. Which makes this a three. These, oop, that's just not a three there. You can repeat a digit in a region. There's nothing about regions in this one. So this one's not a five though. Okay, two divides, so it's gotta be like four, two, or two, one. Um, Cause it has to be two after you divide the two. So four and two are two and one. So there's definitely a two in there. So this is not two. So there's a two in one of these, two with minus. So this has to be, it can't be three, one, and it can't be five, three. So it's gotta be four, two. So, but that's not necessarily, the two could be here though. We don't know which one is which, but this is a one. 
because the two four makes that a one, makes this a five. So we need fives and one of those. This can't be a five, so this has to be a five because the five to make two would have to have two and a half or 10. So this is not five, that's a five. Okay, two minus, this is either two one or two four. So the three is in here with a one or a four. Uh, so two minus, so five. Oh, so five is the biggest, so we're gonna start with five. And we've gotta end up with two, so we have to subtract three, so we have to have one and two. So it's gotta be five minus two minus one is two. Yes, five, one, two, this is not a two, this is a two, this is a four, therefore three. This is one and three. This has to be the three, this has to be the one, this is four, one, four. It puts a one there, this is four and two and three and four and three. There we go. All right, that was kind of fun. I've never seen that puzzle before, 239. Uh, ooh, that got me a sloth, all right. Not surprisingly, once we go back to something with um, numbers and math, I tend to do better with those, not always, but a little bit quicker sometimes with that. So there we go, I got my first sloth of the day. Awesome, so that was Tom Tom. Moving on to the next one. All right, our next puzzle is a Haisu or Heisu. I'm gonna assume Haisu, but I'm not really sure. And um, the rules on this one say we're gonna draw a non-intersecting path through the centers of cells. Notice it doesn't say, oh, visiting every cell. Okay, so it does say all cells. Starting from the S and finishing at the G. Oh, start and goal, okay. Each clue, clued cell must be traveled through on the path's nth visit to the region the clue lies within, where n is the value of the clue. Each clued cell must be traveled, okay, we gotta look at the example. Must be traveled through from the start. Oh, okay, I think, ah, okay, I understand now, okay. So, I was confused because in the puzzle, there's like, two twos in that one region, a four four is in the other region, and I was like, how is it, yeah. But it's the, the number of times it visits. So you'll notice this big square on the example here in the middle, it's one, two, three, four. So the first time you go into the square, you hit the one, then you leave and come back in again, and you get the two, and then you leave, and then eventually you come back in again for the three, and then you leave, and then you come back in again for the four. So, okay. I think I understand the rules now. So, and we don't have to go through every, oh, we do have to go through every cell. We do have to go through every cell, yep. All right, cool. Link in the description. I'm gonna give it a shot, reset the timer. Here we go. Okay, so we're at the start. So we're gonna have to enter this square. Okay, so we know we have to do every cell, so we've gotta hit these corners. Um, now this has to be the second visit which means we have to visit it previously. And we also have to connect the two. So, so if you did this, the twos are gonna have to be connected without leaving and re-entering again, right? We can't do something like this because they have to be on the same visit. We could do that, but there has to be a first visit to the region. So it's gonna have to do this. Now from there, it could go over here. It could go up, we don't know. The start is going this way, so that that forms essentially kind of a new corner here because that start can't connect anything else. Now this can't connect because, oh no, that would be our second visit because we started on the start. So this could connect right there. In fact, it's gonna have to because the two and the three can't be connected and the three and the four can't be connected. So it's gotta do something like this actually. Start two, we can't go to the goal yet. We can't touch the fives. Those are gonna have to be their own visit, essentially. Uh, oh, the two, so we need to do this. Oh, but how are we gonna get back to, oh, nope, that can't be right. Because this three needs to exit again without touching the four. But if it comes down here, okay, the start doesn't have to go to the left. Why did I say the start had to go to the left? I don't know that that's true. Oh, 
Well, or does it have to? Because if it comes over here, where's it going to go? It's got to exit. So it's got to do that. But then we have to get the two. Oh, yeah. No, this does work. Okay. Yes, we're doing this. Uh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. So this is going to come down and through the one and back up to there. So this will be one, two, three, four, and then two there. Okay, so we need to do this. There we go. That makes this our second. Uh, and we need to grab these as well, so we can do that. Uh, we have to come up there. Two, this has got to go down here. I think it's going to come straight down. Three, and now we need to get all of these on our fourth visit. And then, like this. Oh, but we need to do, nope. Because we need to go Where do we get something like that, maybe? But then, how do we get this cell included? That's really close. If we do that, that's really close to working, but there needs to be a second, this needs to be the second visit to this one. Okay, it's gotta be something with this bit down here. Okay, so these these have to be connected to each other. Just like down here, it's the same thing. And we have to go into the corner, so it's gotta be like that, which then means this one, but there could be a th third visit to it. Oh, we could end here, couldn't we? But, When do we get our first visit to this one? And then the second one picks up these. Oh, right, because this is three. We have to exit and come back in for the fours. Oh, of course. There we go. Ah, that was stupid. All right. Yeah, I should have had that one a long time ago. I connected the three to the fours, and that was obviously wrong. Okay, well, that's definitely not a sloth. Hopefully it's a crab. 508, no, I just missed the crab. Okay, I deserve a bird on that one. I definitely deserve a bird. Okay. Yep, so 430 was the crab time, so I definitely should have had the crab, but I was just being dense at the end there. All right, well, that was Hi Sue by Eric Fox. That one's kind of fun. It's interesting trying to think about the number of times you visit, not like how many cells you've touched or something like that. So interesting. All right, I've got one more I'm gonna do. All right, our final puzzle for today is a mochicoro. I don't know if that's how you spell, pronounce it, but that's what I'm going with. Um, so the rules, shade some cells so that all areas orthogonally connected unshaded cells are rectangular. All right, let's pull up the example already. All right, so areas of un orthogonally connected unshaded cells. So the green is the unshaded, the black is the shaded. So they're all rectangles, right? So the black can be like, there's an L shape down here and a, an S shape over there, but the green all has to be rectangles, which of course a square is a rectangle. A rectangle is not necessarily a square, but a square is a rectangle. Um, unshaded rectangles must all be connected diagonally. Okay, so all the green areas are connected at the corners. Clues cannot be shaded and represent the number of cells in the unshaded area they belong to. Okay, we've done some similar types of puzzles, but not quite the same. An unshaded area of cells cannot contain more than one clue, right? Which kind of makes sense. And no two by two region may be entirely shaded, right? So our old favorite, the no two by two rule, all right. I'm going to attempt to remember it this time. Um, if you're newer to the channel, uh, I have a history of forgetting about the not shading a 2x2 two two area rule. So, like, for example, in the bottom right corner here, there's the three black cells. So that one that's green, 
you if you made that one shaded, if you made that black, you'd have a two by two region that was completely shaded and that's not allowed. So, all right, link in the description. I'm gonna reset the timer, see how this goes. Okay, so, I mean, we know that has to be size one. We can do the same thing down here. These all have to be green. Okay, so, and they have to be rectangles. So this five has to be part of a, rec a size five rectangle, which the only way to make a rectangle of size five is a one by five region. So it's gotta be this and then one of these two. So we can shade all the way around here. This gives us um, the two by two issue right here. We need to be aware of, which is gonna force this one to be a one by four now that we've done that. So we can do this. Um, they all have to touch at the corner. So there has to be a shaded cell here or an unshaded cell here. Are there, let's look at the example again. Okay, you can have regions without clues. I, I should have realized that, but for some reason I didn't. So that's gonna be like that. Pretty sure that's what that's gonna do, which forces this one. And that's gonna put a region in here. Now this four can't be a one by four. Oh, but it can't be a two by two. Okay, nope, messed up. I made an assumption that I shouldn't have made. Instead of doing it logically, I did it ass assumingly, I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's gotta be like this actually. Because the four has to be a, a two by two. There's not space, there's not enough room to do a one by four without connecting to another one. So it has to go that way, which forces the two over, which forces this. And then we need to do that. So now that is still a five by five that way. Oh, but this five, how are we doing this five? Oh no, I'm making all kinds of assumptions that are wrong. No, 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 bad, bad, bad. Okay, go back. This five has to do the same thing as this five. The four can be a one by four if it goes that way. Either way, it forces the two to the left, but that was that was bad. Okay, that's forcing that one that way. There we go. Okay. Uh, all right, so the eight can't be a one by eight. It needs to be a two by four, and the only way it fits is right there. Okay, and then we've got to do that for the one to connect. Now this has to be unshaded. Um, all right, so we've probably got some one by or some two by two. Yep, two by two issue right there. This one has to be connected. Then the only way that can connect to something else is there, which has to connect to there, which forces all of that. And now this whole area up here has to be connected to something down here. It's got to do that I believe and that and then we have to not shade this whole area down here oh we've got a two by two thing going on here oh no how did that happen if we go this way then it's not connected so it's got to be here and there oh okay right and so this then has to connect like that there we go yep that makes sense okay Cool, so I was definitely slow on that one. 326, let's see. Oh, it is a crab, okay. I guess it wasn't as bad as I thought. I felt slow. Uh, I was making some some bad, bad. the problem is if you try to just say, well, it's probably this way and make guesses, you get yourself into trouble sometime. Now, if you're um, you know, trying to go for speed, if you're in a competition or something, sometimes you kind of have to go off of intuition like that. You can't think it through logically all the time, but you can also get yourself into some trouble like I did there with this four, so very cool. All right, so that was our final gap. Hopefully you guys enjoyed those puzzles. Let me know what your times were and if you had any trouble with them. Did you um, did you have trouble with the, uh, was it the high Haisu, I think? No, yeah, the high Haisu that I was really bad on. So did you do that one well? Did you have trouble with it? Which one did you think was the hardest? Um, yeah, I'm just curious to know what people think and I'll see you again soon with some more puzzles. Thanks.